Welcome everyone to the University of Bristol Premiere Pro video tutorials. This is part one um, introduction. This video will take you as far as importing and logging footage. Um, the next videos in the series will be editing. There will probably be two editing videos, getting started and more advanced um, editing. And then in the rest of the Premiere Pro series, there'll be titles, effects, sound, and finishing or exporting. Um, so let's get going with this first Premiere Pro video tutorial part one introduction. So in this session, we will be going through organization, backing up your project, Downloading and launching Premiere, importing footage, reviewing footage, and logging footage. And so that's as far as we'll get this time. So let's get going. So, organization. Um, first off, I'll talk about hard drives and then we'll go into the server and backing up your project. So uh, you be working f at home, um, obviously, rather than working in the department where we would normally work. So because of everything that's happening at the moment, your, your, uh, your setup is going to be different. It's going to be a home setup and the, the, uh, the handouts that we have uh, are obviously at the moment they're all sort of um, geared towards working in the department and working at the edit suites that we have there so this is going to be a slightly different setup um, so with normally what what we have in the department is uh, a server um, a media server where you can save all of your footage and all of your projects and not only do you save your projects there, you also work directly from those uh, from the server, and uh, you can access that server from any any edit suite, um, and and that's how it works in the department. So it's going to be slightly different, um, obviously now. Um, however, you will still have access to the server, and what we would like you to do is to use this server to back up all of your projects, um, everything in your project footage, project file, everything that goes in there, we want you to back it up on the server. Um, that way, if anything happens to your personal computer, you won't lose the entire project. Um, also, if you happen to be the only one in your group that has the project on their personal computer and you're not available for any reason, then the project is still going to be on the server and avail available for other students to use. Um, unfortunately, because of the speed of connection between um, home and the server, it's probably not going to be possible to work directly from it. Um, apparently some students have tried and, and had some success, but um, it does depend on your own um, internet connection and potentially what other traffic is going on at the time as well so um, it's it's not something you can rely on being um, a, a fast enough connection all the time so uh, ideally what you would do is is back up to your own drives um, sorry work from your own drives um, so what we would always recommend is backing up to an external hard drive rather than your um, system drive so on a Mac you'll have sorry on a Mac you'll have um, this um, Macintosh HD that is uh, the icon on your desktop and that is uh, what's called your system drive uh, it contains all of the files um, that your computer needs to work um, not just the files that your you know photos videos whatever all, all that sort of stuff but the actual system files that the computer needs to 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 boot up and you know uh, um, run the operating system so um, 
ideally it's it's always recommended that you don't save your project to the system drive that you get an additional hard drive maybe an external hard drive something like that that you plug into your computer USB something like that and you back up uh, to to those drives instead um, editing video can be quite taxing for a hard drive so um, it's making the drive work quite hard um, and the more you work your drive the more chances there are that something can go wrong with it basically so that's why it's recommended that you use an external drive um, if you crash out an external drive then you'll lose the data that's on there yes you'll use a pro lose a project and it can be quite disastrous um, but if you lose your system drive you'll lose your entire computer you, you lose the whole thing um, so uh, yeah it's always recommended to use an external hard drive um, you can get these sort of small drives uh, quite cheap nowadays um, this is a two terabyte drive um, and uh, you can fit you know multiple projects on a on a two terabyte drive that that would potentially last you your entire um, university career um, so that's that's what we call um, an old style uh, spinning disk drive um, actually has a disk inside spins and the data is read off like that um, and then you have SSD drives almost identical um, but a bit smaller maybe uh, an SSD drive works in the same way that your sort of little USB sticks work um, they're just much bigger um, they're kind of relatively new uh, they uh, are starting to become more stable. Um, you might notice from using uh, USB pen drives, stick drives, whatever you call them, that they can crash out quite easily. Um, uh, you know, this it's not so much of a problem nowadays as it used to be, uh, but it, it's still not as good as it could be, I suppose. Um, so I don't think there's there's any one is better than the other at the moment. SSD drives are faster, but they're also more expensive. Um, so you know I I wouldn't recommend one or the other. I, I you know it's totally up to you what you go for. And price is probably the biggest thing that will determine what you go for. I I personally would always say it's not worth spending a lot of money on a hard drive because. Uh, expensive drives can crash just as easily as cheap ones can in my experience anyway um, so I, I wouldn't spend the, m the most amount of money you can on a drive um, perhaps not the least either but you know somewhere in the middle would be, it'd be fine um, also it's not recommended to buy a huge um, you know say eight terabyte drive or something like that rather than buy one eight terabyte drive buy four two terabyte drives um, that way you can you can spread the data and your projects amongst those drives um, you know if you've got four projects going then put one on each drive um, that way if you lose one then you, you know you're only going to lose one project um, you know okay it's, it's not ideal but it's better than losing all of them um, so yeah I, I would always recommend an external drive uh, and uh, smaller and many rather than one large one um, and price uh, don't spend a lot so yeah um, the server like I said you can still access the server uh, what you need to do is you need to download and install um, a VPN, Virtual Private Network. Um, there is a piece of software called F5 VPN and um, you just install that uh, and then this site here is a university page and it will tell you exactly it'll tell you how to install the software, what software to, to download um, and how it connects to the server um, and then once you've done that 
there is details in um, on Blackboard on the planning and making your film site on how to actually connect to that server once you've installed the the VPN. Um, I'm going to maybe foolishly attempt to connect now to see if um, see how easy it is. Uh, so in my applications folder I have somewhere in here F5 access so let's open that up so I'll double click that and then I get it it appears on my toolbar at the top then I just scroll down to connect to UOB VPN and I can sign in for some reason sometimes my sign in email is different there you go um, Okay, so now the F5 access icon has a green light, so that means I should be connected. And now all I have to do is follow the instructions which are in Blackboard. So whether you're filmmaking fundamentals or tech and tech or any other unit, um, once you've got into your unit page, planning and making your film down here select that S go into the planning and making your film uh, link at the top and down here media server instructions how to connect to the media server so from a Mac what I'll have to do is click when I'm in Finder, that that is Command K, and if I just put in, I, I have the address already in there because I've connected before. Um, the first time you come to this, this will be blank, and you'll have to type in uh, this uh, this URL here. Um, once you've done it once then it should uh, remember it for the next time so whether you're year one or whether you're a post grad so that will be PGA or PGB I can just click connect I have to put in my password every time for some reason I don't think you will and that looks a bit strange but let's go down so down in your toolbar on the left hand side of your finder window you should now have this uh, um, little server location and so I've got the archive PGA PGB teaching year one year two year three you will only have access to the year that you are in um, So, dissertations folder, tech and tech. It's not looking like it should actually. <laughs> um, but this, that is how you connect. Um, this could be something to do with the fact that I'm recording my screen um, and it's not allowing me uh, certain access. So, um, I'm going to leave it there, but that's that's that is how you do it. Uh, so hopefully, once you've done it like that, you'll just get in and you'll be able to see the the folders um, that you uh, from your year. Um, okay, so that's drives and um, server backing up. 
So the other thing I want to talk about now, uh, this is all under organization, of course. So I want to talk about using the folder structure. So when we work at the department, we give you a folder template um, and we like you to work within this template because it keeps your footage in your particular folder and it doesn't get messy. Uh, it's it's very easy for us to help you if something goes wrong. If we if you've saved all of your footage in all the right place or all of your files in all the right place, then it's going to be much easier for us to help you if something goes wrong. Um, and also, it's just going to make it easier for uh, you know if you have to share your project with other people in the group, you know where everything is. Uh, you know a million reasons why it's good to uh, good to be organized and keep your uh, footage in the uh, and files in the in a right folder structure so this is kind of how it looks um, really simple to set up so I haven't got a, an external drive connected right now um, if for example I was going to save my project in my movies file I'm going to create my initial project file. So, Premiere Intro Project. So, that's my project file there. Let me just make sure if I put those there, I'll appear at the top so you can see it easy. Um, so this is my Premiere Pro project. Sorry, my uh, my yeah my my main project folder, and inside this, I'm going to create an audio folder. A final export folder. A footage folder, grades for color grading, Premiere Pro project folder, that's not easy to say, and a working exports folder. You can add folders as you go, um, but this will be a good starting point for you. Um, so there you go. Uh, I have... Initially, the first thing you're going to do... Um, so normally at this stage, when we're teaching editing, you'll have already done the first camera sessions and all that kind of thing. Um, and we've been through uh, some, uh, you know, s some uh, sessions with you. Uh, well, sort of introducing you to the uh, to the phone setup that we're going to use. Um, so you may have some footage that you can drop into this footage folder already. Um, I'm going to put something in there as well. So I've got a. I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, I'm going to call one of them phone shoot one and the other one will be Sony FS5 shoot one so we call these shoot one because on the first day you go out shooting you'll come back with a card and you can download it and stick it in this folder shoot day one uh, day two you create a new folder, call that shoot two, etc., etc. Um, the reason you do that is because with the Sony footage, you always end up with the same folder structure on the card, so you can't copy folders of the same name into the same place on a computer. So, what you need to do is create individual folders to drop those cards into otherwise they they all come out in the same with the same names and it gets really confusing um, the phone footage uh, even though this is not 
entirely true for that. You still want to keep your shoot days separately so you know exactly where you are. Again, it's all about organisation. Um, so I've got a couple of things from previous places. Um, it's just one... Uh, phone clip that I've got, but that's fine, that'll go in there. And then I am going to find some footage to go in there as well. So let's just shift this one over. So this is my FS5 footage. So when you shoot on the Sony FS5s, which you will do at some point, um, sooner or later, uh, this is the folder structure that you will see on your uh, SD card. Once you take the card out of the camera, put it into a card reader, open it on the computer and you'll get this folder structure. It, there will be a private folder, a folder in the, on the SD card called private and inside you'll have all of these um, folders as well. You need to copy across the entire private folder. Everything that's in it will come with it but make sure you copy that whole folder over. Don't go looking for the clips inside there and copy trying to copy clips out you need all of this stuff this is all important metadata um, that goes with your video clips and it's all necessary so you have to copy the whole private folder across um, need to stress that really importantly that really needs to happen okay so that's how you uh, initially just copy footage into your footage folder um, which is organized nice and neatly in this folder structure. Okay, I, I'm presuming that you all know how to create folders and, and know your way around your own computers um, so you can save things in, in uh, relevant places. Um, I'm just sort of showing you the best way to organize yourself uh, for your project. So, there we go. Um, that's setting yourself up uh, to start your project. So let's go into downloading and launching Premiere. So again, for downloading Premiere, in the planning and making your film section, Planning and making your film, whatever unit you're in, there should be <laughs> a section that shows you how to download Premiere. Um, it's not currently there so I'll make sure that that goes in um, but you will have also been sent an email with instructions on how to download um, Premiere. So follow those, those instructions from IT. I know some of you have already done this so I know that it's happened. Um, uh, those of you that can't find them, you need to go back through your emails um, and look for emails from resource managers or IT um, regarding Premiere Pro. And you download uh, the Creative Cloud app. Um, once you've done that, it should be relatively easy uh, to follow downloading um, the apps within Creative Cloud which include Premiere Pro. 
uh, and a whole host of other things which you've kindly been given by the university. Um, so once you've downloaded that and all of those apps sorry inside your applications folder you'll have all of the Adobe um, Creative Cloud programs. Um, I've got twice as many as I should have because I've got 2019 in here as well as 2020 so you, you'll only have half as many as this. Um, so Premiere Pro 2020 is the one you're after so this is not the app this is just a folder and the app is inside the folder so you just go inside there and working from a Mac you can drag this down onto the dock and place it onto the dock. I've already done that on mine so once you've done that go down to your dock click the Premiere Pro app and that will open up and then we can get started with that one. So this did take quite a long time for um, ah, a bit quicker this time. Okay, so this is my home window for Premiere Pro. Uh, I have several projects in here um, from things that have, you know, I've been done, been doing previously. Um, you will have nothing initially, the first time. So what you need to do is create a new project from this little button over here. So if I go create new project and then you get the new project window. So let me just get rid of that for now. New project window. First thing you need to do save your project, rename your project, sorry. So I'm going to call this Premiere Introduction. Um, you need to call the project uh, something relevant that's, you know, it could be your group number, um, you know, something that it, you're going to remember. You might not have a title for the film yet, so um, you know, a group number is a good a good one to start with. Um, so yeah, um, just call that something that you're going to remember. And then importantly, before you go clicking OK, you need to make sure you're saving it in the right place. So we need to click on Browse um, in the Save location. And I need to save that in the project folder that I created early, earlier. Um, so into the project folder, into the Premiere Pro project folder, and then choose. Um, so now, as long as I haven't touched anything else in here, I can now save this um, project. Importantly, this in this little uh, tab here, all of the scratch disks need to be same as project. They default to this, so don't worry about that. As long as you just don't go in there and change anything, that'll be fine. It might be worth just having a quick look just to check. Um, but what happens is you get files that are created during working on in Premiere, um, auto saves, video previews, audio previews, render files, all these sort of files, and those files need to be kept with your project at all times so wherever your project is saved all of those files need to be saved in the same place too so as long as that's all good I can now click OK once I do that I get Premiere Pro open so that is downloading and launching Premiere
So now let's go to importing footage. So some of you will probably have already used Premiere. Um, some of you may have used it a lot. Some of you have may may have used it, um, you know, once or twice. Uh, you know, the, the way that I'm teaching you how to do this now is the way that we prefer you to work in the department. Um, and it's the way that suits our workflow best. Um, so you may have other ways of doing things. You may think you have quicker ways of doing things. Um, but ideally, we've set things up to work in a certain way and you will benefit from doing these things the way that I'm telling you how to do them now. Um, there are always, you know, there's 10 different ways to do 10 different jobs in Premiere. So, you know, um, you, you, and you might never do the same thing twice, but it, it, you know, th the way that I'm showing you now is the way that we really want you to work. Um, so, uh, let's get into importing footage and the reason I said all that is because I know that there's several ways to import footage. Um, I might show you a couple of them now but I'm going to show you importantly the one that we want you to to do. Um, so in Premiere I have these main four windows open at the moment and the reason I have these four windows is because I'm set up in a certain way right now and that is because of these tabs at the top. If you're on a different tab your windows will look very different. Um, you don't need to worry about this they're all the same windows uh, as such but um, it might get confusing if you're sort of looking at things in a different way. So we usually just start with the editing one. So the editing tab, tab is probably the one that we, we sort of use the most. Uh, and within the editing tab, we have, uh, you'll notice that when I click on each window, you get a blue box that sort of um, surrounds it. And that is telling me that uh, this window is the one that's selected currently. Um, it does make a difference which window is selected. Um, I can go to the menus at the top and they will be different depending on which window is selected. And sometimes I might tell you to do something, but when you go up there, the the um, you know the the par the parameter for that actual thing is greyed out and that is because you might have the wrong window selected so just be aware of that different windows create different menus so we have the source window this is where you view your footage before you do anything with it you have the program window this is where the um, the footage gets seen when it's in the timeline so this is a visual representation of the timeline then you have the timeline window this is where you um, do your actual editing um, and then you have your project browser window and this is where all of the files that you will bring into your edit are saved including your sequence files everything comes from the project browser window um, so it's again it's really important to keep your project browser nice and uh, organized folders within folders um, uh, yeah just make sure you have lots of folders well named and you know where everything is um, we'll come to a bit more of organization later on when we do editing um, but one thing to note right now is um, folders within Premiere are called bins. Um, so, you know, you may sort of think of a bin as some way where you throw footage away, like uh, the trash on a Mac or something like that. Um, that's not the case. 
within Premiere or any editing software actually. All editing software calls um, the, pro the, uh, the folders bins um, and that's kind of a, an old hang up from uh, from film editing days uh, so yeah um, so if I want to import some footage to work on inside into Premiere um, you can see here it says import media to start so all I need to do double click that and I get the import window um, so then I need to make sure I'm importing from the right place so I need to go to my um, project folder again into my footage folder and then find my footage select it here and click import okay that is a very quick way to import footage and with your phone footage that is a perfectly acceptable way to import clips with the phone footage. Um, with the Sony footage, it's really not the best way to import at all. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the other way to import. Uh, and we can import both of those types of footage um, the other way as well. And the other way is using the media browser. So we click on the media browser tab in the project browser, then we find where our footage is. So I know mine's on my hard drive, it's in users, it's in my home folder, it's in movies, and it's this one, AA Premiere Pro, Premiere Intro. And then it's in footage, and then I can go into my so now if I click this, I'm clicking, clicking the drop down arrows the whole way through. But when I get to the final one, where's my clip gone? Um, and don't worry about that, all you need to do is click on the folder and then your clip appears just here. So then it's just a matter of select the clip, right click on the clip or control click, Seems to be you can only do it from here now. It used to be you could do that. Oh, there it is. How strange. Anyway, right click on the clip, select import, and away you go. So now I'm going to create a new bin by right clicking in here, and I'm going to call that one phone clip and I can drop that phone clip inside there. And then I've got the little drop down arrow to get to this clip. So, um, there's another way I can do this uh, by, and that's um, by importing my clips directly into the bin that I've just created. So if I create another bin now by right clicking in there and call this Sony FS5 shoot one and then now if I, with this selected this folder selected if I then go into the media browser um, because I've already navigated through to my footage I can now just click off the phone folder and onto the Sony folder um, actually no because I need to drill down even further with the Sony footage because I need to go into the private folder then I need to once I'm in the private folder I click on this folder here. It looks like a file but it's actually a folder called AVCHD and once I've done that then I get all of my other clips just here. So you'll notice at the moment that these are all what we call thumbnail views. They're all little video clip views and if I scroll over them it actually plays through them which is quite neat. 
Um, but you, this is because I'm in thumbnail view just down here. I can also go to list view and that will just put them in a, a list for me. Um, it doesn't matter which one you're in at the moment. Um, so once I've got my clips here, I need to select them all. A quick way to do that is Command A, then right click again, Control click. Sorry, why is it not doing that? Control click, select import. And there we go. Now these are already in my Sony bin that I created earlier. Okay, so that's how we import files using the media browser. And the reason that we use the media browser rather than just a direct import is because the media browser um, takes note of all the metadata. So remember I said all of those extra files that come with the Sony footage. Um, if you go through the media browser then um, Premiere will have taken note of all that uh, metadata and it will be available for your for your clips later on if you need it. Okay. So let's go to reviewing footage. So I've shown you um, the tabs at the top and the fact that we are currently working in the editing tab that's all fine um, so we've been through that so the next thing to do really is um, just show you the tilde key first actually so again depending on which window you have selected let's just go back to that. that's the wrong place which window you have selected if I click the tilde key which is that one with a little squiggly line next to the Z key on this keyboard it expands this window out fully so now my project browser window is taking up the whole screen and if we click the tilde key again it jumps back um, it's just really useful if you if you suddenly think you need a lot more space you're not interested in the other windows for now just concentrate on what I'm, I'm, what I'm doing in this window uh, and I need a bit more space to work in then tilde key really useful okay um, so after the tilde key we can now go into reviewing footage properly using the J, K and L keys amongst other things actually. So when you're ready to actually review your footage um, you need to just find the clip in your uh, folder down here so that's either one of these and so reviewing is important for the next stage which we're getting to which is logging um, but I'll just show you how to review clips so any one of these clips I can now double click and it will open in my source window so once I've um, opened up the clip in the source window now I can see what it is I can rename it something useful um, but before I do that um, I need to scroll through the entire clip because I could rename this clip depending on what I can see in the first frame but you know that doesn't tell me the whole story um, if I scroll through the clip and you know um, a UFO lands in the middle of the field over there then I've cut but I've not seen that in the first frame then I've sort of missed the the, the important part of the whole clip really haven't I so yeah I need to scroll through it and make sure I'm not missing anything important a um, couple of ways to do that I can grab this little blue thing here this playhead blue playhead and, and just scrub it through that's called scrubbing just dragging it through there or I can just click anywhere in this little timeline ruler bar and just scrub through that way 
or using the J, K and L keys, J will play my clip backwards, K will stop it. L will play my clip forwards, K will stop it. So that's all good. Um, it's a bit slow if all you want to do is just scrub through quickly and and um, and find out what's in the clip so let me just get this to the beginning again here so if I press L once it will play at normal speed if I press press L twice it will uh, double speed and three times again speeding up so every time I press it, it gets faster and faster so L So you can see, and the same with J going backwards. And then K will stop it at any point. Okay. So that's how you can kind of scrub through your footage to see what's in there. Okay. So. That was relatively easy. Scrubbing and reviewing with J, K and L. So logging fo footage. Um, logging footage is really important. Um, there's kind of some examples of, uh, of logged footage there and some naming conventions. Um, it's the reason it's really important is because imagine you have a project with how many clips who knows hundreds and hundreds of clips in it which is really easy to happen and you'll notice this as soon as you get going with filming it's very easy to end up with uh, you know more clips than you can possibly deal with um, and it happens with um, you know first time shooters all the time uh, you end up shooting way more than you need to and and then the editing process becomes really difficult because you've got so much footage, you, you know, you don't know where to start. Um, and and just even watching it all through becomes a nightmare. Um, so it's really important to name uh, your footage as you go through. So logging footage is just simply renaming the clips. Um, and you need to rename a clip so that the name tells you what's in the clip without you having to open it. So if you have given the clip a name that says video file one or something like that, that tells you absolutely nothing about what's inside that clip. So you're going to have to open it to check. Uh, and if you have to open the clip, then renaming it has been total, a total waste of time. Um, so, you know, you need to give a clip a, it's got to have a, a description of what's in there visually, um, what you've actually shot, you know, the, the subject, but it's also got to have a description of the type of shot that it is, um, whether it's a wide shot, a close up, medium pan, tilt, you know, crane shot, all this sort of thing. Um, is it any of those things? And then finally, you just need to add whether it's take one, take two, take three, take four, etc., etc. Um, you know, sometimes you don't always get these things right, um, but it's important to 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 try your best to to name this stuff as as well as you can. And the reason it's important to do that is because when you're editing. You'll be editing through your, you know, your your projects, whatever. You'll suddenly think, ah, oh, I remember those that clip that would fit in perfectly just here, and then you so you have to go in there and try and find it. Um, if you've renamed everything really well, you'll be able to tell, you know, where it is. Not only because you'll see the name, but you also know from the clips that are close by it um, where it was. Um, and that will save you, you know, maybe 20 seconds in your edit. So it doesn't sound like a lot. But if you think that the whole process of editing when you're starting is finding clips. Um, and if you can save yourself 20 seconds every single time you find a clip, 
you know, over the whole length of your project, you may save yourself two, three, four days of, of actual editing time. So, uh, and that's going to, uh, you know, later on in life, if you're doing editing for a living, that's going to, you know, it's going to save you, save your employer money and you're going to get employed again and again every time you do that. Um, but if it, you know, and if you're just working for yourself, it's going to, it's going to make your day rate go up, um, and it's going to make your life just easier. Also importantly, and I see this time and time again, students will, you know, they'll get their video clips back from their first shoot and they'll start watching them because that's what you want to do, you know? Um, but they'll, they'll, they'll start watching them and they'll click through every single one and watch every single one but not rename them as they go and i've seen this happen and i've gone through to people who, who are doing this and halfway through watching their clips i'm going why aren't you renaming them as you're going and, oh we're going to watch them first and then rename them but but you're watching them now and not renaming them so why don't you just rename them now and then you won't have to do the whole thing twice you know it, it, it happens believe me so um yeah the first time you go into your uh clips to watch them start logging straight away um otherwise you're just going to have to watch them all again it's a time saver uh and a lifesaver logging footage um so just a uh, just quick one about naming conventions uh I, I've, I've i've covered that really haven't i so yeah it, it's important to know what's what's in the clip so this one, for example, split tree dialogue. I know that's um, a shot of a, of a tree that was split by lightning. And I know that it's got a person talking next to it. Um, and I know that it was take three. Um, what I haven't put in here is whether it was a wide shot or anything. But I do know that um, all of these split tree shots were all um, s s locked off on a wide shot. So I could see the person and the tree in in the in the same shot. Um, sometimes, when you know that a whole uh, host of clips are all the same shot size, then you don't need to put that in every single time. Um, you know, as long as you know it, then uh, then that's fine. Um, it's when you you know you have. You, you know, I might have filmed that split tree in, you know, as a close up, as a wide, as a medium. Um, so, yeah, if you've got lots of different size shots, then make sure you put them in. Also, the important thing about naming conventions is try and keep the, the file name as small as you can, as short as you can. Um, so wide shot could just be a W. Um, um, you know, a mid could just be an M, close up, CU. Um, so your your shot sizes can just be um, abbreviated. Um, then you need to have a little bit of detail there about what's actually in the shot. Um, and then a take one or a take two. So how you actually um, name the clips or log the clips is very simple. Um, it's just a matter of going to the clip itself in here. So here we also have um, icon view or list view. Um, I always find list views easy to work with, um, especially when you're renaming clips in this uh, stage. Although having said that, you can, in icon view, you can also obviously see what's in the entire clip. So rather than have to load it up into the source window you could just rename it you know directly in the in the project browser um, and the way you would do that is just literally click on the name and type in whatever it is so that's wide um, I haven't even looked at it really <laughs> Can scrub through using this little playhead as well. So that's a, a wide handheld HH and that's Nonna, that's her name. Look 
working window and that is tape one okay very simple so I can put that back into list view and there it is so in your when list view it's just a matter of clicking once on the on the name to select it twice to get it into edit mode so you have to actually click on the text itself you can't do it on the icon that won't work um, but on the text okay so that's how you actually rename the clips if it's an interview for example um, you might come up with an abbreviation that tells you who the interview is by who is of um, who's the interview um, interviewee uh, just maybe their initials something like that um, because you don't want to be writing their name out every single shot. Uh, you might have several shots of this interview. Um, and what I would do there is um, for each shot, just a little bit of, that describes what they're talking about in that um, in the shot. So, um, you know, because, you know, there's nothing visually going on in the interview other than a person sat there so uh, the interview is more about what they're actually talking about so it's about kind of making sure you've got a, uh, a description of the dialogue rather than necessarily the the actual action in the shot okay um, so yeah that's that's logging footage and I think we're basically done so that is Premiere part one, introduction, um, finished. So look out for the, uh, the next videos in the series, editing, um, then we've got the, the sound, titles, effects and finishing. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.